So we're about to pull up to Booth Home Buyers, owned by Zach Booth. And they I was just out here actually filming with Cody Hoffine from Utah Sell Now, two companies that do over a million dollars wholesaling that heavily use driving for dollars. Zach Booth only uses driving for dollars with the Deal Machine app. So we're gonna get to walk through his office and show you guys behind the scenes of a real big player. They're playing ping pong. <laughs> Ah, is this a uh, real estate shop? <laughs> right now it's a ping pong competition. How are you doing? Nice, nice to meet you, Miguel. I'm David. What's your name? Miguel. Ah! Miguel? Yeah. Awesome. Ah, this side. is Ty. Nice, nice to meet you, Ty. Yeah. What's up, Zach? David, how are you, buddy? Really good to meet you. This is Ty. Nice to meet you, Zach. How's it going? I'm Cameron. Cameron? Yeah. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, nice to meet you too. You guys, is this a new office? This is brand new, yeah. We just, we moved in here like two weeks ago. It looks ago. like a man cave. Yeah, it's it's gonna get worse. Thanks, we're gonna do uh, we're gonna do a full gym right here, and then we're gonna have shower room, lockers. And all really? That stuff. Yeah. So you're basically gonna live in here. Basically, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you're only closing real estate deals and pumping iron. Yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be pretty awesome. But you got drivers out there driving for you, right? Yep. This is our our actually our driver. Yeah. Awesome. So we're, well, he's actually moving up. Uh, he's gonna be my my executive assistant. This is Cameron. Okay. Uh, he used to be our executive assistant, but he's going to Cali to actually implement this for another wholesaling company there. Oh, so, are you moving? Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. So going to Cali to do that. That'd be good. We're gonna miss him. He's been awesome. He's he's helped me really implement what we have now. So, awesome. We'll, we'll continue this game. What are we at now? Seven? Oh, yeah. Ten. I think it was a 10 <laughs> four. I was, uh, No. Four. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were close. Well, come on into my office here, guys. Great. Feel like I'm being watched. Yeah. Look at these things. So, uh, are you familiar with ClickFunnels? Yeah. Dude, I hadn't heard of it. Okay. I had no idea what it was. Yeah. And I joined KBB. Okay. And uh, so KBB is that Tony Robbins course. On gotcha. Coaching for coaches. Okay. Right. And I heard about ClickFunnels and selling your program through that. Mm -hmm. So I've been working on, so I launched it, closed it, relaunched it. When I relaunched it and had success stories, I, I got overwhelmed with students mm -hmm. and I got overwhelmed with questions from potential students. Gotcha. So I knew I had to have like a platform to explain the opportunity mm -hmm. in the coaching course mm -hmm. that kind of sold itself. Gotcha. Right. So we've been working on that. I've got basically what we're going to do is we're going to have, we're going to push traffic to a webinar, a mm -hmm. live webinar. The live webinar will sell the course. It's going to have uh, modules, which I can show you the course and then uh, a weekly coaching call as well. Okay. So sweet. Um, let me show you my, my course here. This is just people that have reached out to me from like two videos I've done. Wow, that's awesome. Podcast, yes, I've got a whole bunch of students to sign up. So we have been doing it through Rizuku, but we're gonna do it all through the ClickFunnels platform. Okay. Um, so we're gonna transfer this over. Uh, let's see, so this is the, uh, this is the course right here. So, <coughs> welcome video. Uh, getting them set up for support for uh, Facebook and then hot zip codes, um, talking to your cash buyers also where they want deals, um, setting goal, downloading the app, which is the deal machine app, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> set pin criteria, uh, track your drives around the block. So this was that new update that you guys had mm -hmm. for the master map is awesome now, like being able to have uh, have a, a overview of where they've driven mm -hmm. and then the color coordinated mm -hmm. color coordinating it for how long ago they had driven it yeah that was very smart because we redrive every area every six months okay so, yes, so that'll turn yellow for you guys when it's time to redrive exactly it's perfect that's it's awesome perfect yep so so explain all of that you know your app is really essential to the course it really is um i talk about all the marketing to the list um and then uh, keeping track of their numbers and then mm. building a team and then bonus materials. For the keeping track of your numbers, have you seen the new analytics that we launched in Deal Machine? Mm -mm. 
I haven't seen that yet. I think it could be really helpful. I'm curious what your your main numbers are, but I'd love to show you the analytics if you got time now. I would love to see it. Okay. Uh, you should be able to pull it up on your account uh, if you want. So yeah, you were using other apps. What made you decide to use Deal Machine? The, the, for all of my students, two things. Okay. Um, number one, like there's, there's good apps out there, of course, right? Like, honestly, you guys are further ahead. You're more responsive. Your, your support's better, mm -hmm. right? Like that's a huge thing. Mm -hmm. Like just to get a developer on the phone saying I wanted to promote their app was almost impossible with everyone else besides you guys. So their support's really lacking. Um, the other big thing was uh, certain locations, certain places in the country, other apps don't even pull data. Mm. And we work everywhere. So you you wanna... work everywhere. Yeah. And so like if I'm going to promote someone's app to help my students, I got to make sure it's going to work for every student. So I had a couple students that I brought on, they're like, dude, the Drive for Dollars app doesn't work. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh crap, well we got to figure something else out. Yeah. Um, the other big thing was pricing was was an issue on some of the other apps and then the amount of pins. Yeah. So there was other apps that put like a limit of how many you could pin and the pricing was outrageous if you tried to scale the business. Yeah. You know, because traditionally Driving for Dollars is all about like, you know, a house here, a house there, finding, you know, maybe 10 houses a week, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm teaching thousands a week, mm -hmm. you know, and so like that scale was new. Yeah. And, and so and they, to, you got kicked off for using the app too much, right? Yeah. I we had, want you to yeah. use the app as much as possible. Yeah, exactly. So, so that was, that was a huge issue that we dealt with, um, with some of the other apps. Um, mm -hmm. the, the other big one was the new launch of the master map. Mm hmm. So you guys came out with a master map that worked. Yep. But having the new update to that with the tracking, mm -hmm. like no other app has anything close to that. Yeah. So those were like the big things. Yep. So and you like the color things. coding, right? Because you, you actually redrive yeah, stuff. Yeah. The, the color coding to, to the, to the map, like it's it's cool to see where you've driven, but it doesn't help if you don't know how long ago you drove it. Yeah because you want to continue to redrive areas after a, a certain amount of time, what I suggest is six months. Mm -hmm. And if, you know, it's just all black or all, you know, one color, you don't know how long ago it was, you don't mm -hmm. know when to redrive. So your logistics of keeping track of those drives would be a nightmare. For so sure. it just, it simplifies it. It really does. Like awesome. we actually had a developer and like a software system that uh, we were using before that worked awesome, mm -hmm. um, but it was complicated. I had to have a tech guy help me because I'm not techie. And then the other issue is actually is becoming obsolete at the end of this year. It was a, it's called Google Fusion Tables. Okay. So that's what we were using before. So actually your guys' development came perfect timing because awesome. we had no other choice. Yeah. Point, so. Well, I want to show you the analytics too. I think you're going to really like it. I just changed your password. What is it? It's uh, so you month to date, year to date, custom. Yeah. Month to date is my favorite one. I like that. We've been using another, okay, so we've got 2,488. Um, well, last month you had 7,000. Yeah, so the, half, half of this month, so we, we're, sh we're actually hitting about 2,500 addresses every single week. Okay. Um, and so, like I said, we use all the different apps, mm -hmm. all, you know, intermittently because I want to test them. I want to see what the new updates are. I want to make sure that I can... I can be the authority to my students, mm -hmm. right? I don't want them to have to guess which is the best app, what's working. And so this isn't showing all of our pins, Okay. Um, as you can see. I mean, I wouldn't be embarrassed by adding 4,000 properties. It's still a lot of properties. Yeah, but it's just important for people to know. We had somebody talk to us yesterday and they were like, well, I added a lot. And I was like, how much is a lot? And he was like, 60. And I was like, bro, you gotta do a lot more, you know, cause you gotta have those expectations set. Wow, so you guys have added almost 30,000 properties. Yeah, through this, through the Deal Machine app, I think in the last two years, I think we've added um, like 80,000, um, but we're repinning a lot of those. Okay. So, but yeah, it's it's a lot. I mean, okay. we have a lot of data. Yeah. I mean, a lot of data. Let's um, take a look at some of the other graphs. Keep scrolling down, there should be total investment. So, 
because we're not using the postcards for you guys. So the 744, what does that represent? Um, that just m mean any dollars that you've spent so, with us. Okay, so probably the um, like subscription. Like okay. Right. That's cool, tracking the drives. We've driven mm -hmm. 1,400 miles. Wow, that's cool. It's a lot of hours. That's cool. I didn't know you could do the analytics like this. Yeah, but it's brand new. That's why I wanted to show you. When did you relaunch this? Um, just a couple of weeks ago. Okay, yeah. this is awesome. Yeah, I haven't jumped into this and seen this. Dude, that's, you know how cool this is? Because I'm going to have to do a video and add this to my course. That's because, what I thought. Yeah, oh, yeah totally. Because um, one of the, the big issues with hiring a driver is you have, like, I've had this happen in the past where you can get on the phone, right, and then just start adding houses mm -hmm. from your bedroom. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And and it's like... And that's not what you want. No, because then I start they spending money on the eyes on the property yeah. and make sure it's distressed. So so Miguel that's been driving for us that's in here, he's amazing, mm -hmm. uh, absolutely amazing. And uh, he's like, dude, I'll go to the areas and I'll see all the, the old pins or the old things that were added. Um, and he's like... They weren't pinning, like they obviously did this from their house because, because it wasn't actual distressed yeah, homes. Yeah, they were pinning yeah. like like beautiful houses. Yeah, so this keeps you keeps everyone accountable. And you can actually um, filter it down by Miguel if you want to. Yeah, you want exactly. me to show you how to do that? Yeah, I want to see that. Okay, so scroll up to the top. And then there's that filter option in the top right. So you can um, change it to Miguel. And then click save. Update. Yes, update. All right, so he's added 26,000. And then. That's so cool. Let's yeah, if you scroll down, he's done 1,000 miles and 261 hours. Yeah. Yeah, he's a beast. So, yeah, this will just keep getting better as you obviously add more properties and yeah. use the software more. For sure. Um, so I heard you you had a you had a hundred thousand dollar deal recently, right? Uh, it wasn't me; it was one of my students. Oh, really? Yeah, it was one of my students. Okay. So um, my biggest deal, my biggest driving for dollars deal, is actually that one up there. Oh, cool! So I had a big check made for my trophy. You know? Yeah, so that's obviously not the actual worthy. actual check, but yeah, it was eighty four grand, two hundred sixty four and sixty six cents. That's my that's my net. You know, that's okay. not that's not like a flip. Yeah that you know I made a portion it was of just that. a wholesale deal yeah so yeah. I actually I, I closed on it and sold it like two days later is when we resold it so I didn't do anything to it it was kind of a complicated deal it was a uh, it was it was one of those super obvious ones you know mm -hmm. had a hole in the roof mm -hmm. and like the garage was like tipping off the house and oh wow a, yeah it had a bunch of issues you could tell it was vacant yeah um, but yeah that was my biggest deal uh, but my uh, so it's actually this uh, is one of those deals that you've won in the deal machine system? Uh, the hundred thousand? Well, any of any of them that you've done recently. In the deal machine? Yeah. Um, what do you mean by that? So there's this feature. So not only can you track how much you've spent on deal machine, but you can track your your, your profits too. So do you have to plug those in? Yes, I was going to show you how to do that. Show me how to do that. Yep. Yeah. So go to the deals, um, and we'll go to list view. Yeah, you guys can come see the deal board. Oh yeah, let's go see the deal board. So my acquisition man is off. Uh, and uh, cold callers. Okay. This is uh, my acquisitions office. Oh. Whoa! Yeah, kitty cat. Did you? Are, where, what's the story with all these? Because you, you um, hunt, right? Yeah, we pretty much all of us hunt. Yeah. Um, you know the we use all the meat uh, and you know the. People think it's kind of crazy to have mounts everywhere, but it's it's cool because it's it's a this is something that you guys brought home. Yeah, this is uh, you know this so my acquisition manager shot this one um, with his bow. Wow. Yeah. So That's we're crazy. we're all we're all into hunting. Yeah. Right? So it's it's a it's a challenge. It's fun. It's meat. Um, so we like it. Yeah. Kind of crazy, but. Uh, the so this is the dill board we have going right now. Um, we have 
So we have this one that's closing, I think today. This one's closing tomorrow. Oh, great. Um, that's a lot of cash in two days. Yeah, so we got 50, right? 50 grand closing yeah, between those two. this week. And then this one right here, we're gonna make about 80 grand. I've closed on this one already. Oh, great. Um, we gotta get the, the freeloading uh, squatter out of there. Okay. And then we'll list it. We'll make about 80 grand. I didn't do anything to the house. I'll just list it and sell it. So you actually take the deals down now? Not all of them. Okay. Yeah, if it makes sense, we do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, so this was drag for dollars, drag for dollars, drag for dollars, drag for dollars, drag for dollars. This one was drag for dollars. This one was a referral. And this one was from a Tom Kroll list. So you can see most of our money comes from driving for dollars. Yeah. And that's a referral as well. This one, we haven't updated it yet to where it came from. But let's see on the most recent deal, it's 55 West Russet, Russet Avenue. 55 okay. West Russet Avenue. 55. <clears throat> there it is. 55 Russet Avenue. Yep. So let's click that open. Was that added by Miguel? Mm-hmm. This is a Miguel drive. Awesome. So that's the thing, like we're pinning all of these houses, we're finding all these houses with one driver. Mm -hmm. Like that's the beauty of having this app. Yeah. You know, is you can cover a market of two million people mm -hmm. and every six months with one person. Yeah, and if your driver moves to California, it's got everything saved about where he's been, so a new driver coming in wouldn't take over, wouldn't redo the same work. Right. To plug in the ROI, you want to change the status from pending approval, and then change it to one deal, which should be down below. There you go. One deal? One, yeah, you won the deal. And then uh, save that, should be a button at the bottom. <clears throat> nice. You got a badge. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so close that out, and now's, now's where you can enter um, your exit strategy, which would be wholesaling. So you want to click select that first. And then um, you can enter your, your purchase price and your wholesale fee, um, and then that information will show up on your analytics. What was that, 26 grand? It was grand? 26 grand, yeah. Oh, there you there go. You go. There you go, 20K, closed in deal machine. That's cool. And then if you head back over to the analytics, um, that's where it'll show you how much you guys have been profiting off your driving for dollars. There you go. Right here. Yeah, so it's, this is the today, so it's all the way over to the right-hand side, but right. um, that can be something cool for your students to be able to track you know, their profit versus what they've invested in the, in the driving for dollars. That's pretty awesome. Is there a way to, let, let's say they're using some outsource, outside marketing, like for example, if they're doing cold calling through like Mojo Dialer, can they plug in those expenses for how they contacted them? It's a really good feature request. Not right now, it just tracks what they've spent on Deal Machine, okay. but I think that'd be awesome, right? Why not let them plug in the expenses they're having with other, you know, other aspects of it too. Cool. No, this is really awesome. Um, that's really cool. Having that ability would be to, to track outside expenses mm -hmm. because one of the things that I coach my students on is um, is different strategies to reach out to these sellers. Yeah. Right? Because, you know, just postcards works, uh, but there's multiple other ways that, that mm -hmm. you can reach out to them. So, no, that's really cool stuff, man. Yeah, you guys are making amazing progress. I mean, this app is so far beyond what all the other ones have accomplished. Thanks, we're working hard at it. It really is, man. It's pretty awesome. So do you know about um, the feature requests? Like, I've, I, yeah, I, yeah, I have I, heard yeah, that. Where do, you, that. where do you access that? Let's open up a new tab and go to deal machine dot feature upvote. Feature, feature up upvote vote dot com. com. Yeah. And so these are stuff that like you can submit and then people can vote on them. You can vote on these too. Awesome. Yeah, and then um, the ones that we've done, they're in, in green. So you can see like we're, we work off this. And so we're like tackling off some of the top features that are requested. Cool. Yeah. Cool data uploads. 
Yeah, so or like the master map, is that what that one is? Somebody wants to say they get like a vacant property list from their, uh, wherever they get that. Yeah. And they want to like upload that in a deal machine. Or if you've got deals that you've pinned from other apps mm -hmm. and you want to upload that in a deal machine, that way you're not pinning them twice. Right. That's what, that's kind of what they would, uh, yeah. that yeah, we would do for that. That's a cool one. So it looks like that's kind of next on the list, huh? Yeah. Dude, your guys' app is so cool. It's really cool because like everything that I had to do when I first started, mm -hmm. um, like cause when I, when I really first started driving for dollars, I didn't even have an app. I was like writing down the addresses and looking them up and then yeah. the app came available. And then all these updates you guys have been coming up with, like I've had to use like, outside things like I just shared like the master map I had to use Google food fusion tables and mm -hmm. I had to um, you know pay lots of money to have all of these tech people right mm -hmm. build these systems out for me but it's all really in one place uh, the CRM it's it's really also becoming a CRM where you can track you know with the analytics like that's awesome um, you know all of our analytics we keep track through our, our CRM system yeah right, through Podio yep but here pretty soon like you guys are gonna have absolutely everything that the other one has we uh, we definitely want to make it seamless to, to forward those deals to Podio as well. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you have used the Zapier integration or not, but I'm pretty sure we have it. Yeah, it, it basically just the moment you add a deal in Deal Machine, it forwards it over to Podio as well. Oh, the the in the analytics, if you add the income from a deal, it'll not pop the it over. analytics, but just a deal in general. That um, if Show you what you're talking about, I want to see that. Yeah, sure. So, um, well, do you know what Zapier is? Not really. Okay. So Zapier connects like thousands of apps together. So if you create a Zapier account, you can actually create a Zap is what they call it. And the Zap is like when a new deal is added into Deal Machine, make a new deal in my Podio account. With, so that your deals from Deal Machine are automatically inserted into your Podio account. Okay. Does that so, make sense? So I would have to. So that's something you can set up. Uh, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Now that you say that, I know that my developer that's helping me build out my funnels account for yeah my course actually had me sign sign up for that and I okay cool with, but I, I don't i'm not techie you know? sure, yeah, it's no problem. <laughs> the other thing i thought you might be interested in is i'm sure you guys export stuff from deal machine right yes okay so historically you've been able to export everything at one time right and then you had to filter for right. date pinned and so we've got some filters built in now you want to see that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So the way you do that is go to the deals and list view, and then and then once that comes back up, click on the filter option, and then if you scroll all the way to the bottom, I believe all you got filter by date added. So now you could be like, um, let me just select the deals that Miguel added this week. That's perfect. Yeah. So yeah, that's awesome. It's funny because like all of all of this stuff. In my course, I'm. I need to update now, because of. Sorry, no, we're I, just trying to make it easier. No, I you have made it easier because before, like, like uh, this new update, what that got rid of is you. You could download, but you had to download everything you've yeah. pinned, mm -hmm. and so we were downloading like thirty thousand. It took time to download that many, and then you had to in the Excel spreadsheet you had to know how to filter by date, mm -hmm. and then go through and delete those. But this makes it a lot easier for yeah. someone kind of like me that doesn't completely know. makes it a lot easier good in that kind of stuff. So well, let's go all the way through just so you know how to filter it and export it. Okay, so August, let's say, uh, let's just do for the month maybe. Okay, and then click your second day. Whoops, very bottom. So July. Oh, there we go. There you go. I had to double click it. So filter. Now, scroll down a little more. Save filter. So that is about 3,000 deals and you can export those 3,000 right there with that button. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm not gonna do that. So I'll... Yeah, so hopefully that makes it a little easier to get your deals where you need them to go. No, that's awesome. Yeah. So, so you're saying that uh, we have the biggest driving for dollars campaign that you guys have seen? Uh, one, yeah, before this, I think the largest was like 20,000. I haven't checked recently, but 30,000 is definitely the biggest I've seen so far. Well, that's pretty cool. Yeah. That's cool. Because I know that that's not even half of what we have total. Yeah. So it's impressive. Yeah. Good with all the other apps. So pretty awesome stuff, man. We've, we love it. We've really pushed this Keep to, using it. to the fullest extent, mm -hmm. I think. 
pretty awesome. Well, I'm excited. Thanks for showing those things to me. You're welcome. Um, something that... So how do you teach your students to reach out once they've got the leads? Uh, so we teach two different things. First, postcards. Okay. Um, I heard you guys drop pricing on postcards. We did. Yeah, they're 49 cents now. 49 cents. If you have this add-on, which is $50 a month. That's so it awesome. makes it worth it if you're sending over 100 in a month. So these are some of the case studies I've been working on with some of my students. Awesome. Um, so like Nick, he had never done a deal. And in the first few months, he, did, he made like just shy of 60 grand. Okay. Um, let's see, Michael McLeish, he's awesome. I think just this year he's done, uh, I think just shy of 400,000 okay. um, from Driving for Dollars. Scott Dallinger, he's the one that did the 113,000 deal. That's awesome. Yeah. So I got to see that one. You want to see that one? Yeah, let's see it. Okay, let me give you the watered down version. So the case study is like 45 minutes. I'll give you the oh, wow. five minute yeah. testimonial. All right, so I've got Scott Downer here. Uh, we just got done with a long podcast. Uh, super grateful for him and for his time to be here with me today. I just wanted to quickly uh, just recap basically what we talked about and his experience with the course. And I want to let you tell, or let Scott tell you about Are you a hologram? So go ahead, Scott. Dude, that's weird. Absolutely. Huh? Well, I've been wholesaling up here in Portland, Oregon since December of last year. Uh, we did some initial deals out of the gate in our market with a, uh, with a particular list that we purchased. But after we hit it a, a few times with direct mail with cold calling, we kind of felt like we squeezed all the juice that we could out of that list. And we needed a new marketing avenue to be able to get revenue from. And we heard about Zach's driving for dollars course from Tom Kroll actually. And Tom told another student, hey, if you really want to use driving for dollars as a channel, don't do it sporadically, you know, here and there. Like if you're gonna do it, do it. And there's a guy named Zach Booth that has built an entire business around it. And he's taken on some students where he's shown them how to do it. So I was like, are you kidding me? That sounds like if someone wants to learn driving for dollars, you're telling me that there's a guy that will show me literally exactly what he's done in his business and I could just plug and play that in my business. I was like, yeah. So join your course. Uh, I think I was part of your beta group and we, we just started following exactly what you told us to do. We got a driver in the beginning it was my wife and we just started driving neighborhoods, hitting houses. He told us which apps to use. Um, we uh, built up a, a list, started cold calling it, started doing direct mail to it, and, uh, and we pulled some deals. So the first deal, uh, without going into all the de details, we made $113,000. Jesus. Uh, and that was so from a house that we in our very first week of driving. And first week, 100 grand. Weeks later. It's nuts, dude. Yeah, that's incredible. I that's know. so incredible. I think that is, so that is exceptional results. Um, it, you know what's fantastic? That is, that is so awesome. There's like another uh, another two minutes. Sure. We go into his next deals and his pipeline and his business and, and stuff. But what's so crazy about this is like, like look at me. I like I'm not even that like whoa. It's so weird to me that it's it's not new. It's not new. Like right. people are making, like my average deal is over twenty thousand dollars. You guys saw my deal board. I mm -hmm. have an eighty thousand up there. I have multiple, you know, mid twenties to high thirties. Right. Um, and it's, I don't know. Like when I first started this, you know, three years ago or so, the idea of making that much money was like it wasn't. It almost didn't seem real. Yeah. It almost seemed like the gurus were just scamming people or or you had to be taking advantage of people. Mm -hmm. And it was just really interesting. Like my first deal, um, so I was still a window washer, right? That's where I came from. I was You're a washing I was, windows. I was a window washer to where I am now. Okay. Um, it's been a rough road, but uh, you know, I wanted to get into real estate and I remember like I had set a goal um, and you know, it's nothing pretty, but I always have my goals right in front of me every day. Mm -hmm. And I had set a goal to get two real estate deals. I wanted two rentals or two flips. I wanted to do two real estate deals that year. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't really have the money, um, but I had some equity in my house. So I had to refinance some money out of my house. Okay. So I had that money ready to go, right? Yeah. And I remember like it was a goal of mine. I was like, I'm gonna figure this out. And I had paid for some real estate coaching um, 
it was before Wholesaling Inc. It was years before that. Mm -hmm. And I had never really done a deal. I had learned a lot, um, but they didn't teach marketing, right? That's why I'm so passionate about the marketing is because like that's what was missing in my business. Like that's yeah. what I think most people are missing. Yeah, yeah. So uh, anyways, I was washing this dude's house, super wealthy man. He was like 70 something years old. Um, just a super nice guy, him and his wife. His name was Stan and his wife was Peggy. And uh, they they were extremely successful. He was a civil engineer uh, for a lot of years and um, was telling me about all the projects he had developed. And then he's like, and then, you know, in my late 30s and 40s, I got into developing neighborhoods and just went out on my own. And I was like, oh, you're a real estate developer. And I got talking to him about it. I was like, that's so cool. My, one of my goals this year is I want to get two properties. He's like, oh, that's interesting. I have two rentals that are a pain in my butt. Mm -hmm. I don't want to deal with them because I've got these two developments going right now and the tenants aren't paying. I just don't want to deal with it. So he's like, I'd give them to you for a really good deal if you want to buy them. And I was like, well, how much? He's like, half a million dollars. And I was like, well, I don't have half a million dollars, dude. And he's like, well, what do you have? I was like, well, I could do seller finance. I could give you 30,000 for them down, mm -hmm. which was like less than 5% down, right? Yeah. Like, and crazy. And then he gave me amazing terms, like low interest. And uh, I went in there, got the tenants out that weren't paying, quick eviction, and put tenants in that wanted to rent them and have the option to buy. I just went in and cleaned them. I didn't even fix them up and they were not in good shape. Okay. Um, but I did an option to buy and within two years of that, I made over a hundred thousand dollars profit just selling them to the tenants. Really? Yeah. Wow. And I was like, like my mind was blown. I was like, no, this is real. Yeah. Like it was, I didn't take advantage of the dude. I solved his problem. He didn't need the money. He didn't want to deal with the hassle and the headache. Mm -hmm. And so I went and did, did some of the, the effort that he didn't want to do. And I got, right. I got compensated very well. Right. Like, like compared to the amount of time I spent on that to how much I'd, you know, how much effort I'd spend washing windows for a hundred totally. grand. Oh, dude, it was completely like, it was, it was mind blowing. And so, um, once I had those deals going and I had tenants in place, I knew, I knew roughly how much I was going to wake or make if they exercised that option. So I was like, mm -hmm. man, I need to get into this more. So I hired another coach. I didn't have the money to hire a coach cause I had pretty much spent it all on those projects. Yeah. You know? I yeah. was in more debt with my house. But I put most of it on a credit card, hired a coach uh, who was Tom Kroll, respect the dude like crazy. And uh, he gave me a lot of the tools that I needed to really get going. And, yeah. then, and then it was just life changing after that. And then I got into coaching because I started having success. You know, that first six months I made over $100,000 just assigning contracts. Mm -hmm. And then the next year after that, I did just shy of half a million. And towards the end of that year, I was like, man, I want to get to a million a year. And I didn't really know how to do that. I was doing most of it with driving for dollars to make that half million. Yeah. I was like, I want to get to that like next level. I want to be, I want to make so much money that I don't have to work, but I work because I enjoy it. You know, yeah. like I wanted that freedom. And uh, my buddy invited me to join him in a, um, in a self-help journal. And it was called living your best year ever by Darren Hardy. Okay. And in there you make three big goals for the, for the next 12 months. And I wanted to, one of my goals was to make a million dollars. And I was like, well, how do I make a million dollars? In that book, it shows in the very beginning of the journal that you have to give away what you want to receive. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, how do I give away a million dollars if I don't have a million dollars, right? And uh, I started like brainstorming, like how could I give a million dollars? And I was like, well, I need to start helping other people, coaching other people, right? Okay. And uh, I could put a million dollars in their business through my coaching. Yeah. So I brought on some students. It was not about like building a coaching business. Yeah. It was all about building my investment business yeah. by helping someone else. Okay. And it was really cool because by helping them, they helped critique my own systems. I found so many giant mistakes because they asked me questions that I didn't know the answer. Mm -hmm. So I said, hold on, let me figure it out. And I would dig into my own business and be like, oh my gosh, I'm throwing away so much money. Like I, I look at how much money I lost or spent or how much I lost in opportunity cost because I didn't have the system I have now. It's hundreds of thousands of dollars. Like the way I compensate my drivers now versus when I first started, I can calculate in the first three months, I can calculate that, that I overpaid my drivers by $70,000. Wow. Just, yeah. on, just on how I compensate. Well, yeah. 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 So, so like those, like coaching and and helping my students has made my investment business so much better. Yeah. And and even cooler than all of that, I've found so much fulfillment and like 
passion about coaching. Mm -hmm. Like I could wake up every day and do it for free. Like I really, uh, I really could. Were you doing it for free at those first students? No, I wasn't. And the reason I wasn't, I talked to Tom Kroll, who I respect, right? And, uh, and trust his, his advice. And he's taught me that you don't ever coach for free. And it has nothing to do with uh, you need the money or want the money. It has everything to do with if people don't perceive value, they won't take action. Mm -hmm. So you could be wasting your time because they're not taking it seriously and following through. Exactly. Because they don't have any skin in the game. Exactly. Yeah. And, and he's taught me that whatever decision you make as a coach, whatever you change in your course, whatever you teach, whatever you don't teach, whatever your pricing is, it, you should always ask the question first, like, will this bring more success to my students or will this hurt my students? Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter if you're going to make more money by doing it. It's always about, will this help my students? Because, Absolutely. Because if you're helping students, if you're getting like, hundred thousand dollar income testimonials in the first week like if you're getting those kinds of things like you'll never you'll never go without as a coach yeah because you're because you're solving so many people's problems right, right? and so you know figuring out the pricing on my coaching course now it's a hundred percent on what I think would be best for my students like I don't want information junkies buying it because I don't want them, you know, wasting my time and right. wasting the other students' time by consuming me You're right. where I can't give more value to them. Right. So I've priced it where it's very affordable, you know, the hundreds of thousands of dollars that I've lost, like they're paying pennies compared to that, mm -hmm. you know, to get exactly what we do and how we do it. So now it's exciting stuff. I'm really, uh, I'm really excited for the launch. Uh, we've set a date for the first wife live webinar uh, for September 5th. Okay, that's um, gonna be here. That's gonna be here in a few weeks. So I think next week we start sending out some invites to this first webinar. Um, they're kind of an inside thing. So not everyone's gonna have access to that first webinar. It's just people that have heard about me and reached out to me that are gonna have access to that first yeah. webinar. So cool. Yeah. We're excited. I'm super excited and uh, glad that you're enjoying the app and the updates that we're making. And, oh, you know, same thing. Like, we want to make those updates so they're going to make your life easier and your business better. And uh, that's why we have that feature upvote thing. Yeah, so you can no, tell us what to do. But just wanted to say thanks. It was awesome meeting your team and seeing your office and all the hunting you guys do. Yeah. Man, that's impressive. Yeah, it's it's fun. Um, you know, all of, all of these deer... Every time I see him, like, um, people don't realize, like, you know, we've already eaten the meat. And it, so it's, it's funny because I've had coaches, advisors tell me, like, don't show that you hunt because not everyone appreciates it. And, uh, and I get that, right? It's, it's different. Um, not everywhere in the country, like, that's a normal thing. Right. In Utah, it's a lot more normal, right? Because we have so many mountains and yeah. animals and, um, but you know, we use the meat and every time I have a steak with my dinner, I know what animal it was. I remember the experience. I remember processing and taking care of the animal. Mm -hmm. um, I remember praying over the animal. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I remember, I remember like I, it's an intimate experience. Yeah. Every dinner is an intimate experience. Mm -hmm. Right. And you know, so these, these animals were processed. The skin was, uh, the hide was preserved and the mounts were done. And so now every time I stop and look at the animals, I remember, I remember the, the, the experience, right? It's a respect of the animal. That's why I mount them. Yeah. Um, is each one of them, yeah, they're, they're mature, beautiful animals, but they're, uh, you know, each one of them meant something to me. Um, you know, this animal here uh, was, was an animal that I watched um, before the season opened. I watched it for probably 16 or 17 different days. And I have video footage of him, and um, I knew where he lived and what he did. And um, he was ex he's an extremely old deer. Uh, he's about an eight-year-old deer. Mule deer don't live past about nine. Okay. Um, so he's, uh, you know, he's actually got torn ears. Uh, the taxidermist repaired it, but he's got a bunch of torn ears from fighting. Okay. And uh, yeah, what's going on with his? Uh, so so an, so an animal uh, with. So there's difference between horns and antlers, right? Yeah. Horns stay on the animal forever, right? They just keep getting bigger and bigger. So okay. like on a cow, they just keep getting bigger and bigger. Those are horns. Yeah. Antlers shed every year. They fall off every year. The whole thing? All of those antlers, yep. Yeah. So you can see right here, 
Um, right here, this is right where they fall off. Um, they grow this whole thing every year. They grow this every year. And each year they keep getting bigger and bigger antlers. Gotcha. Right? So they'll fall it's off. It's like four points as well. Yeah. So every year as, as an animal um, starts to grow, um, the blood supply stops, right? Because there's, there's actually fuzzy skin, right? Over those antlers. And then it, the blood flow stops, they harden, they, you know, uh, rub their antlers on the trees and uh, that's where you get the coloring from, from sap. Okay. And then they'll, they'll breed and they use those to fight off the other bucks and, and uh, they'll break them a lot of the times fighting other animals. Yeah. And so when they fall off, they rejuvenate every year. Mm -hmm. So they have antlers to fight to breed with. Gotcha. Yeah. So they're, they're really cool. I mean, you can go out in the springtime and find them on the ground all over. And wow. Yeah. It's pretty cool. That is cool. So yeah, mule deer are my favorite animal. Um, I think that they're absolutely amazing. They live in some of the coolest places. I think these look different than the deer we have. We yeah. Have white tail. Yeah. Most, most deer are white tail, um, in the country and, uh, the mountains out West have mule deer. Um, and they live, you know, clear up above tree line in the summertime. And, uh, so it's, it's really fun. Like, the, the mountains, like the, the experience, like it's it's my favorite animal to watch and to be around. It's super so, cool. I don't ever want to like push, you know, my views of how the world should be on anybody. And I understand that that people love animals. Right. And I think so many times people think that hunters don't love animals. Mm -hmm. um, but I actually do service projects every year. I dedicate... Um, quite a few hours every year doing service projects to better habitat for mule deer because mm -hmm. they're my favorite animal. Um, and all of my hunting supplies and hunting gear, it gets taxed and goes back to conservation for, for these animals. And so, you know, hunting to me is, is not only about harvesting the animal, but protecting the animal. And uh, I think it's a part of hunting that people don't realize. And, and, I, and I do know that there's the stereotype of a hunter, right? It's the toothless hillbilly that you know, is half drunk when he's out killing something, right? And it's, and it's sad because I think it can be so much more than that. Yeah. yeah. So I think you've shown us that just today. Yeah. And you talked about it. Yeah. They're they're special animals. So, so I would never leave the, uh, the western part of the United States just because the mountains to me are amazing. Oh yeah, it's I'm our first time out here. And oh yeah, never been out any mountains here, but. It's just beautiful being surrounded by them. Yeah, I've got my truck loaded and with my four wheeler and my trailer, and I'm taking off to the mountains right now. Actually, awesome. That's why I've got to go. Well, I've don't let us keep you. Too. Yeah, this was a lot of fun for me. Hopefully, cool. it was good for you. It seems like it was. Yeah. Can't awesome. wait. Can't wait to uh, see that webinar, webinar go live in September. Yeah, it's it should be it should be uh, should keep me busy. Yeah. So, yeah, my wife. Uh, so so most of the hunting I do is in the fall. Mm -hmm. And my wife's like, why would you launch your course? And, you know, right when you want to be in the mountains, like right when you have the, you know, you financially and with your investment business, you could take as much time as you want. Like, why are you adding so much to your plate by coaching? And, and the, the thought that I had was, you know, it's a good point, but I actually find as much joy and accomplishment from coaching people as I do from my, you know, hobby that I've had for since I was a little kid. You know? Yeah. So it's, it's, uh, but it's going to keep me busy. I'm going to be, I'm going to be scrambling every day. For sure. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming out. Yeah, you're welcome.